Services Committee has approved language in its annual defense policy bill that would require women to register for the draft. The National Defense Authorization Act approved by the committee behind closed doors Wednesday, quote, amends the Military Selective Service Act to require the registration of women for selective service, according to a summary released Thursday. The United States has not instituted a draft since the Vietnam War, and Pentagon officials have repeatedly said they intend to keep the force all volunteer. What's up, everybody? And you are listening to the best of the Media Mike radio show. I'm your host, the Media Mike Speaks, sponsored by New Justice Media, where we are the voice of the everyday citizen. The time is now 26 minutes past the hour here in the Lone Star State. So let's get to it before it's too late. All right. Calling all ladies, calling all ladies to the front lines. Because that is where you might be heading. If you are the ages of 18 to 25, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 26. So, yeah, it's back on the table where young ladies may have to register for the draft. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. It is back, ladies. So what I mean is selective service. They call it selective service. Now, you know, we don't have a draft, but yeah. It's selective service. Your name goes into a database. So just in case we do have a draft. Yeah. So we're going to get to this here because we're going to be here just a little bit so we can get this uh, uh, on the way. So if you are thinking about joining the military, yeah, look, it is a, a pretty good career in peacetime, in peacetime. <laughs> so uh, I served 15 years, three in the Army and 12 in the Air Force. So. However, you know, for years, young men, before they reached their 18th birthday, would have to have registered for the selective service, meaning that just in case we do have a draft, you know, you have a draft number and, you know, you'll be called up uh, for our nation's defense. So now being that uh, equality is here, they're saying that ladies between the ages of, ages of 18 and 25 will have to register also just in case. You see? So let's get to this story. A fight over whether women should be required to register for a potential draft has been uh, revived in Congress. Last year, Congress appeared on the precipice of making women register with what's formerly called the Selective Service System. But the idea was dropped from the defense policy bill signed into law after closed door House Senate negotiations, negotiations despite having bipartisan support. Now, the proposal is back in the version of the National Defense Authorization Act, the uh, NDAA, making its way through the Senate and conservatives are again bowing a fierce fight against what they refer to as drafting our daughters, unquote. Well, wait a minute. Now, this is the, this is the era of equality. I don't see what the problem is. Now, the U.S. military has not drafted anyone since the Vietnam War. And defense officials have repeatedly said they have no intention of moving away from the all-volunteer force. Now, we all know we got this thing about uh, Korea and Ukraine and Russia and China. Yeah. All fighting over Taiwan. Are we on the verge of World War III? I don't know. But if so, ladies, ladies, we need all hands on deck. So let's continue. But men ages 18 through 25 still have to register for selective service in case of an emergency catastrophic enough to activate the draft. As I stated earlier, if they fail to register, men face consequences such as losing access to federal financial aid for college. Now, earlier this month, the Senate Armed Services Committee voted 20 to 6 to require women to register for the draft as part of its version of of this year's NDAA. Uh-oh. 20 to 6. That's a high number. The version of the NDAA advanced by the House Armed Services Committee last week does not contain a similar provision despite the committee supporting the idea last year. The makeup and political dynamics of Congress have not changed since last year and the same group of conservative lawmakers who opposed the provision then are vowing a fight again this year. Now here's the thing. The reality is that if we are a country that actively chooses to forcibly 
conscript our daughters, we are past the point of salvation. Representative Chip Roy of Texas, Republican of Texas, wrote in a letter this month to the leaders of the House Armed Services Committee. He says in a separate tweet opposing women res registering for the draft, Roy claimed without citing specific evidence that even volunteer women in the military caused the standards to be reduced. Unquote. Well, Roy... Welcome to America. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, once again, are we still fighting over equality? This is what a lot of women wanted. Matter of fact, they fought for years to have combat roles, which they do have. They have combat roles in the military. I don't see what the big deal is. You tell me. Now, in the Senate, 12 Republicans wrote a letter saying, including this lecture service provision in the NDAA would be a grave mistake and would needlessly inject divisive social policies into important debates over our national security, whatever the hell that means. Now, in 1981, the Supreme Court ruled that a male-only draft was justified because women were excluded from combat jobs. But that was before the turn of the century, and also 9-11, and before feminism went full commando. <laughs> But all combat jobs were open to women in 2015. Congress followed that decision by including a requirement for women to register for the draft in initial version of the 2016 NDAA. It was jettisoned from that year's final version of the law in favor of the commission to study the future of the draft. Now look here. The feminists can't have it both ways. Either we're equal or we're not. That's all I'm saying here. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I served. Honorable discharge. Both Army and, uh, Army and Air Force. 15 years total. What is the problem? Alongside different races and cultures of people and women. What is the problem here? Why is there so much pushback? Isn't this the age of Aquarius or whatever the hell they be saying? So let's continue. The commission finished its work in 2020 and recommended that, a, that draft registration be expanded to include women, calling it a necessary and fair step. You know, our numbers are really hurting in the military and um, a lot of men and women should step up to the plate. And, you know, and what I mean by that is they should be they should be required to register. What is the problem? They fought to to uh, to join. They fought to to be integrated into the military. What is the problem? They can do that, but then they're not required to register for the selective service? Oh, come on now. Now, the Supreme Court last year declined to revisit the issue, citing the expectation that Congress would soon act. With the commission's recommendation providing support, lawmakers tried in last year's NDAA to require women to register. But despite being in both the House and Senate versions of the bill and having bipartisan support, the requirement was again dropped from the version of the NDAA that got signed into law amid adamant opposition from a small but vocal group of conservatives. Yeah, they can kiss my ass on that. So will not you pick up a weapon to stand the post? So after last year's defeat, supporters of female draft registration vowed to keep working to update the selective service requirements. Now, here's the thing. Senator Kirkston Gilliband. Democrat New York. Listen to this, good people. To say only men are needed in that moment of a national emergency is outrageous and obscene. That's what he, that's what he says. In a statement this month, Gillibrand highlighted the selective service provision in this year's NDAA as one of the important programs and measures that are now on their way to becoming law. The commission concluded that the time is right to extend selective service system registration to include men and women between the ages of 18 and 26. Yeah, I said 26. This is a necessary and fair step, making it possible to draw on the talent of a unified nation in a time of, of national emergency, the report concluded. Gillibrand, I don't really care for Democrats, but you know what? You got my vote out of New York. I like you. Kirkston, I like you. Now, the old Republican from Texas, I don't like you too much. You know, you just, I don't know. I, I'm really disappointed. 
in that, in, uh, that uh, Republican from Texas. I am. Now, here's the thing. Listen up, good people. When asked if President Joe Biden supports the change, a White House aide pointed to a September 2020 Military Officers Association of America candidate forum in which then candidate Biden said, the United States does not need a larger military and we don't need a draft at this time. I would, however, ensure that women are also eligible to register for the selective service system so that men and women are treated equally in the event of future conflicts. Unquote. Go Sleepy Joe. Best news I've heard the whole two, three years you've been in office. <laughs> now, for those of you who do not know what the draft is, allow me to define or select the service. The draft. A draft is the mandatory enrollment of individuals into the armed forces. The United States military has been all volunteer since 1973, but an act of Congress could still reinstate the draft in case of a national emergency. The selective service system is the agency that registers men and is responsible for running a draft. Now, who must register with selective service? Almost all men ages 18 and 25 who are U.S. citizens or immigrants living in the U.S. are required to register with Selective Service. Citizens must register within 30 days of turning 18. Immigrants must register within 30 days of arriving in the U.S. Men in, men in the U.S. on student visit, uh, student on student visitor or diplomatic visas and men who are incarcerated are not required to register. That's maybe who we need. So anyway, so for all you feminists out there who shout girl power, now is your time to shine. There's an old Chinese proverb and it says, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Total equality, that is. Until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night.